Roll up something to take along. That's right, you take along right here on the Freakers Ball. It is Friday night here, June 1st, 2018. Yeah, this is the Freakers Ball. We are live right here on RLM, RealLibertyMedia.com. On channel one there, if you, if you want to go that way, or just uh, pull down the old show page thing and... Well, you're probably already there if you're listening to me, right? Ha! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome to Figures Ball. We're also live on the audio stream, rlmradio.xyz, uh, and uh, various other places that we're at, Freedoms Network uh, over there, uh, uh, We and we advertise on Minds.com and, and on Twitter.com, and uh, Static, eh? Static, eh? Well, <laughs> tell ya. I'll try, try to move my mic out of the way a little bit there. Uh, anyway, so uh, welcome welcome to the show. Um, let me see. Let me, let, me, let me just double check over here, see if I got any static going on on my side here. All right. No, it sound, sounds clear. It sounds all right on mine. I don't know. If you're getting static, maybe try and reload like Juan and Taco did there. Uh, it should sound clear, though. Uh, I just listen on my on my other I I, I can tune on my other computer. All right, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so welcome to everybody out there in RLM land, wherever you may may well be. Moose Girl will be along very briefly, I would assume. But uh, howdy to all the folks here in the Real Liberty Media chat on IRC dot freeno dot net. We got we got a ton of group, ton of group of people, a ton of group, a group of ton of people. A big group here um, <laughs> in the chat tonight. Myself and the Moose Girl, of course, Miss Kate, Asmo, and Beth Z, and Chloe, and Charles and oh, another Chloe, and Dakota, and Graham Z, who did her rocket chair just a little early, earlier. Very good show. Uh, we got Don Seed times two. We got Java Doctor. We got the Wanna Taco Rain. Um, the Fluke Bot. Rob Works Trust. No one. Um, the Phantom. Um, but, 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 uh, Circle, Colfax, Cowboy Tech, Cowboy Tech, way down there, what are you doing down there? Uh, we got Dima, we got Flash Nasty, we got the Frump Meister, we got Gooberzilla, Guest 91, that's, uh, JJ's, Kozu, Moe, Pox, 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 what's going on, man? We got Pone Sauce, and we got the Sock Puppet, and we got the Skittle. <laughs> we got other people out there listening, I know, that are not, uh, here in the chat room. So how to see you all, too, wherever you may be hanging out there in the fields, in the trees, on the dunes of the desert. Down at the ocean, hanging out on your surfboard. I don't know where y'all are, but uh, you're there. You're somewhere. You're, 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 you're <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, uh, uh, whoa, we got, we got a phone call. We got a, we got, we got, we got a moose girl. Hello? Hello? There you are. <laughs> I'm here. All right. Uh, so, there's the Mighty Moose Girl. Here I am. How you doing? Doing good. That's good to know. Good to hear. Finally got my voice back. You got your voice back? You got your... Uh... Yep. How did, how did you lose it? Yelling at the festival. Uh -huh. and hollering. Hooting and hollering. Now, now, did you do any hooting and hollering last night? Last night? Oh, yeah, a little bit. I did. Woo, boys! Yeah, <laughs> they're done. They graduated. Yeah. Graduated. 18 years old and graduated all in a week. Right. Tell you, man, that's a... Yeah. It was a long haul getting there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It went quick. I mean, when you look back on it... It didn't. It seemed like it went really fast, you know. Right, right. Anyway, Matt, Zach, if you're listening, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> they're up north. Oh, they're they're at dad's. Yeah, they had to see their other grandma. Ah, okay, okay. So well, their other grandma was there, and well, all three of their living grandparents were there yesterday. Odd. <laughs> what? That sounds odd. I don't. I don't know why, but it just sounds odd to have three living grandparents in one place. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that was cool. I mean, a couple tears were shed. I get emotional when they do the speeches, you know? Yeah. It's really weird. I don't know. <laughs> no one noticed. I wasn't bawling, but I was tearing up. It's not like at a hockey game where you got to yell at the umpire or whatever. Right. Where people notice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So who's your favorite band at the festival? Um, I was, I'm going to have to say Phil Lesh and Family Band. Phil Lesh and the Family Bond. Terrapin, Terrapin Family Band. Cool. It was. It's Phil Lesh, who's the bass player with the Grateful Dead. Yeah. And his two sons make up most of the Terrapin family band. Uh-huh. It was really good. They were really, really good. Excellent. So yeah, it was. It was a lot of Grateful Dead music last weekend. Yeah. Like all the other bands, a lot of the other bands did Grateful Dead cover songs. Great. All weekend. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Now, now I know you missed Samantha Fish show. Yeah, I did. But was she hanging around? Did she come and play with anybody else? Uh, no, I didn't see her. Because, I mean, it wasn't it's not like a blues festival. It seemed like kind of an odd place for her. It wasn't a blues fest, just all kinds of music. But was there other blues artists there? Uh... She's the only really stand out as an actual blues artist. Yeah, well. that's what I thought. From I mean, I looked at the uh, whatever the lineup, and uh, it didn't look like, you know. <laughs> I'm glad she went and played the show, but uh, like I said, it didn't seem like a normal, you know, not a, not a blues festival. Although she does, you know, do some other other styles of music. Well, it was all kinds of music. I mean, some bluegrass, some rock. I mean, it's just a, it was a mixture. And, and actually, we're, frog we're, leg though. What's that? And that frog leg. They were really freaking good. They were one of my favorites too. Frog leg was amazing. They're so good. They're all kinds of music. I don't even know how to describe their music. They're just I guess reggae would be the best way to describe their music. Yeah. But they were really good. They blew everybody away. Yeah. I mean. Great. And, and yeah. so let, let me um, ask this question. It was the Revival Festival, right? Yes. Did you feel revived afterwards? Oh, yeah. You bet. <laughs> right. You bet. It was hot out. It was hot all weekend. Like, super hot. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been cooking here. But I did good. I mean, I didn't get sunburned. And I took a shower every day at the truck stop, so. Great. Wasn't too bad. So you, so you didn't get too uh, ganky. No, although the <laughs> I found out that the one truck stop across the street is cheaper. The shower, showers are cheaper. How much are they? Like two bucks or something? Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. Take a shower. I mean, but you know, last weekend I would have paid twenty bucks for that shower. <laughs> Probably. I can understand. I would have. That's just that's just kind of crazy. <laughs> they have showers at the festival, but it's five bucks for five minutes. Yeah. And by the time you're in there for ten minutes, you're spending ten bucks, and you right. get a ten minute shower. <laughs> you know, you know, it, it used to be. Well, I'm, I'm talking about early '80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but you could go. A lot, I mean, there was a lot of places you could pull into, like a campground or whatever, and they and you just go in there and use a shower. Right, yeah, they they frown on that now. And 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 uh, yeah, even even though if that you could go to a truck stop and it was like a dollar or two. Right, yeah. Well, that was back like in the seventies, eighties, early eighties. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I never took showers at truck stops back then. So. Well, we're you know if you're driving driving around doing a camping trip throughout the the wilds. Yeah. Of uh, wherever, um, which I did with with a girlfriend ahead of time, and we were driving a, what, a converted van, but it didn't Ooh. have a shower. But it didn't have a shower in it. Right, right. So we'd pull in at various places and, get, and grab a shower, you know. 
on a trip throughout you know throughout all of California. Well, you can still do that. It just costs a lot more. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, you know, it was, that's 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 quite the increase in price. <laughs> uh, yes, I think drivers get a discount. I don't know how much, but you know, actual truck drivers get a discount. I am not an actual truck driver, so <laughs> no discount for me. Yeah. You can pretend you're a truck driver. I believe it. Sure. Yeah, why not? A lot of female truck drivers. Hell yeah, they do. And you you know all the truck lingo. You work with the truckers all the time. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Hey. (laughs) All right. So, uh, so when, uh, when, when will the boys go and sign up for college, or have they done that already? They're signed up. I mean, they're not registered for classes yet, but they're enrolled, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, they still have to go their orientation and all that and get their classes. And are they going to the same school, or? Supposedly. We don't know yet. We're not sure. Oh. All right. Matt's, Matt's been accepted, but he hasn't. He finally signed up for his housing. But A dorm room? Yeah, he's behind the ball, dude. He, you know, they're 18. I, I tell him that he needs to do these things. That's all I can do now. Right. If he don't take care of it, he can go to tech, tech school for a year or whatever. Right. That, that'll be all I need, too. Yeah, I mean... And he can get in and out like, of trade you school. Get, you got to get your shit together here, buddy. You can't just be whatever, you know? Well, he, he can get I in, in, in and out of They tra- have to have jobs next week. They have to bring, start bringing money in this house next week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, there's tons of jobs out there right now. I mean, it shouldn't be hard to get a job. Right. I mean, Zach got a job off or a, a mailing thing yesterday. It was through their college, but it's kind of a program with their college and this company, but it's marketing and 70, 17 bucks an hour. I mean, I'm going to fucking apply there. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, good. Good. Cool. That's. I, mean, I don't know if he's going to do it, but he should. I mean, he's got a job lined up, but if it's only part-time, he can do the other one part-time, too. Well, it's certainly better than minimum wage, you know. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So, anyway, that's, yeah, it's been quite the crazy week. I mean, Monday I woke up in Harmony Park, drove home, and then it was Tuesday, Wednesday, then their graduation was yesterday. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Happening stuff. Yeah. I was stressing out big time, though, man. Over the Over the graduation? Well, just, yeah, the finals, and then, you know, making sure they passed their classes and stuff. Well, they, they both walked out of there with a the diploma in hand, right? They don't give you the diploma right away. They just have their finals well, on Wednesday. That's what they did for us, too. Uh, yeah, I didn't do one, so I don't know, but as, as, I, as far as I remember, for it. I, saw, I saw my little brother do his, and they handed him his diploma. They give you a holder for it, and then they you go pick up your your uh, diploma later. So some of those kids up there graduating, they may, may not actually be graduating. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well. It's messed up. I mean, they don't even get their yearbooks until later on. It's like, what well, is how, the point? How do you have all your friends sign them? You can't. That's the thing. It used to be that way. We used to get our yearbooks, like, the day before the last day of school. So we could have all our friends sign them and everything. Yeah. But not this school. I don't know. It's messed up, man. No, I don't have to worry about that school anymore. No, I don't. (laughs) Thankfully. All right, let's kick off some jams here. and uh, do that. We'll come back and find some other interesting stuff that we could talk about. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Interesting time. (laughs) Isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> it is. Oh, uh, this is nine nine nine. 
Freak flag me, wave your flag. That's right, let that freak flag fly. Yes, indeed. Um, that was a hailstorm, freak like me. Uh, I think I have another hailstorm uh, tune, brand new track, to, uh, for, uh, queued up for later on. We got, we had before that we had Jimi Hendrix with freedom. Uh, that's what I need. Yes, indeed. And we kicked it off with a nine 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 feeling. All right, with the crew. So, Moose Girl, are you a freak like me? <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. <laughs> you laugh? What? Yes, I'm a freak. Proud of it. Can you huge, hear me? What? Wait, I'm, trying, I'm trying to understand. What, what? That's a huge burning grim finger. Uh, uh, Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, in our pictures. Of oh, 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 there. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't, the ones that are flashy. Uh, I, I don't see that. I, I, yeah, that's kind of in the background for me here, so I don't get to see it. <laughs> Unless I look over at the other computer, which is... Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is a huge burning grim finger. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, oh man. So, so yeah, I laughed. What? Why? Why did you say that? Because you are a freak. Oh, because you were laughing. You said, "Are you a freak like me?" And you just start laughing. Are you? Are you? Yes. Uh huh. So I thought. <laughs> I am. Freak. Oh man. I have a tattoo too. You what now? I have one tattoo. And, and what is that tattoo? It's just a lilacs. A what now? Lilacs. A morlock? Lilac. A lilac, like a flower? Yeah. Hmm. Lilac. 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 Oh, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got uh, some flowers on there, and then the the boys did a birth. I didn't know what else to do, but I think I'm, I saw this really cool tattoo this weekend, last weekend, and I might get something like that. It's a tattoo of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Okay. Like the states, the outline, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, all right. I mean, I'm from Minnesota, live in Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Sure, why not? It's not very original, but. No, no, it's, but, I mean, but, you know, whatever works, that's. Whatever. I can never think of anything to get for a tattoo, so I only have the one. <laughs> yeah. But I saw this guy at the grocery store, and he had, he was an older guy, like in his 70s. This dude had to have been in prison or in a Mexican gang or something. I mean, he had, his whole face was like covered with tattoos, and the scariest one was the two fangs he had coming down from his mouth. Like, huge fangs. Okay. I felt bad for him, though. I'm like, dude, you're 70 years old. You know, I mean, <laughs> he looked like he spent, uh, like, 20 years in prison. Well, I mean, he probably did. He probably did. I mean, but he, I tried not to look at him because I didn't want him to think I was staring at him, you know? <laughs> Yeah. That was a scary looking dude, though. He was at the concert? I, I mean, that was scary. It looked scary. I can only imagine how he looked in his younger days with all that shit. All them tattoos on his face like that. And he was at the concert? No, he was at the grocery store. Oh. All right. He was at the Walmart. I see. Yeah, you know... The Walmart had nothing to do with it. It was just a dude in a grocery store. But <laughs> no, he's he's one of the people of Walmart. <laughs> Definitely, very interesting. Yes, I you know, but actually, if you think about it, that guy would probably be very interesting to interview. Yeah. You know, he's probably got a story or two to tell. I, I would imagine, yeah. 
I mean, when, you, when to me, when I see someone that has those tattoos on there, I, I, I automatically think that, oh, they were, he was, he had a hard life, he was probably in prison, probably in a gang at some point, you know what I mean? Sure. And it's just, it, it would be interesting to interview someone like that. I would think. It seems like it would be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's got, like I said, tons of stories, you know, probably some very gruesome stories or something, but just an interesting life he's had, you know. Obviously, with all them tattoos on his face and his body. Yeah, I can't imagine. Why Why would somebody want a tattoo on their face? <laughs> I don't know, but he had several. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I think one looked like it was covered up because it looked like it was a black, a black thing. I'm like, oh, that must be a cover-up. <laughs> Maybe it said fuck or something on there. At one point. Who knows, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, Wally World, you know, they are big. They are huge. They are huge. They're Walmart huge. is fucking huge. There's no doubt about it. Yes, they are. The boys were trying to tell me that Walmart wasn't the uh, company that made the most money. We looked it up, and it it wasn't. It was like General Electric or something like that. I don't know. Well, General Electric. But Walmart I, I, was right up there. Walmart's right up there in the top five or so. Yeah, I, I can believe you know. General Electric because they get all that defense money. Right, right. But uh, as far as like consumer. You know, retail yes. stores. It, it's probably Walmart probably King. Walmart. Yeah, they are. They're, Either they're them or McDonald's. King. You know, McDonald's might be right there too. I don't think McDonald's is as big as they used to be. Thankfully. Right, because McDonald's <laughs> sucks, dude. Yeah, they do. They suck. <laughs> yes, they oh. do. Yeah. Oh, um, God. On the way to the festival, it was really, really cool. Because there was, like, thunderstorms on Friday. Last Friday, it was thunderstorming. Thunderstorming, like, isolated storms all over the area. Minnesota, Wisconsin, right? Right. Anyway, um, I'm driving there, and a couple of times I'm driving through rain. And at one point, it was the hardest rain I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was, like, the back end of the storm or something. Mm -hmm. And it just poured. Yeah. And so then it cleared up because they were, like, spotty. They were just isolated, you know? Right. But there was many of them. Anyway, so I get to Minnesota, driving through this hard, pounding rain. All of a sudden, it stops. I look up. There's this huge rainbow, like huge, like bright, too. Super bright rainbow. You can see the whole arc, the whole whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, oh, my God. That is so freaking cool. And then there was a double part. It was like a reflection of the one. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the, the, double, the double one wasn't as bright. But people were, like, driving, and it was down to one lane because it was, like, construction. And I'm like, oh, shit, I want to take a picture, you know? So I tried to take a picture while I'm driving, not safe, by the way. It's not like I put my phone up and the thing. I didn't even look to see if it would work, you know? I just, like, put my phone up and hit the screen real quick. Yeah. But anyway, there was a rest stop coming up, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to pull over the rest area, you know, and take a picture of this thing. So I did. I pull over in the rest area. A bunch of other people are pulling over. Everyone's getting out taking a picture of it, you know? Yeah. So it was really cool. I'm like, well, that's got to be a good sign. They saw it at Harmony Park, too. Like, by the time I got to the park, it was gone. But it was I was in the area of Minnesota where they, they saw it at the park. Like, so I was you, didn't, there. You, didn't try, you didn't go and try and find the end of the rainbow? No. You could see the end, too. <laughs> you like, you get your pot there. of gold. Get, get your pot of gold. My pot of gold. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah, at least I don't work at Walmart. At least. You know, it could be, it could be worse. I could actually work there. Right. <laughs> All right, I got this story okay. here I want to talk about. Okay. And and it's on the UPI.com. From the CDC, four more dead from E. coli outbreak in the last two weeks. Okay. Now, this is dealing with the uh, romaine lettuce that was supposedly grown in, in the uh, southwest 
uh, yes. of the United States. And it's been going on for months now. Well, here's the thing. Lettuce, you know, it doesn't have a very long shelf life. Not really, no. They never did a recall on this lettuce. Okay. And they, they just left it in the stores for people to buy, regardless of, of that. And people have been dying from it. And the thing is, they're full of crap if, if they're going to tr keep on saying it's from the same batch of lettuce. This is, must have been from lettuce still right. coming coming out of that area. Um, and, and maybe still coming out of that area, except I'm not sure how long their, their growing season is for that. But um, uh, re regardless of that, um, a lot of people have gotten sick and or died uh, from this recall that's been going on um, over, it's been, I think, I think it started in March. Um, yeah. Really? So, yeah, yeah, 35 states, pe people, uh, has infected 197 people in 35 states since March. <laughs> Which, they, so, why would they allow the, the, why would they not do a recall, number one? Uh, right. Number two, why would they allow stores to keep on selling it? Uh, most people probably unaware of the fact that this was even going on. And they're still out there buying this stuff. So, so what, what the hell is the whole deal with this this romaine lettuce situation? Um, okay, it says here twenty one day shelf life. Uh, how so, do they, I mean, I get how they determine where it's coming from, but at the same time, to me, E. coli you can get that from touching something that has shit on it and touching your mouth. Right, but they're blaming it all on this. Now, Sock, yeah. Sock Puppet says he'll ask the uh, store manager uh, at Publix, which I guess is a grocery store, to uh, yes. to take a better look at the romaine, which, cool, that that's great, um, but how is he going to know? <laughs> He's not going to know. I mean, I don't, I don't you can't think tell you, by at it. you can just look at it and, and, just, and decide whether or not this is on there. Um, I would say just quit buying the romaine. I don't buy romaine lettuce. A while. I have it lately, so. um, I'm okay. <laughs> let, let us take a look. Let us. <laughs> you too funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yes, but it, let it, us it, do it, that. It, it, listen to this statement, because it is, I, I, don't, I don't even know how this makes any sense. It says, <laughs> some who became ill did not eat the lettuce, but had okay. close contact with those who did. Okay, that's what. What that makes no sense. What <laughs> this whole thing on this this lettuce thing? It's just like uh, this. Don't sound like any anything like E. coli to me. Um, if if no. we even had close contact with them. Goofy. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, um, anyway, I just thought I'd uh, tell people about it in case you're unaware, but like I said, this has been going on for a long time, uh, at least two months, it might, might have been, might have been April, not March, I, I don't know when it started, but, uh, uh, I think the article said March, so, right, yeah, since March, 35 people since March, oh. so, um, uh, whatever. Dog just, wandered just, into a just, bar just, tonight. <laughs> what's that? Oh, you know, Claire. Someone just posted a dog. He he went to the wigwam tonight. It's a bar. Okay. He's, like, he's loose or whatever, running around. He ends up at the wigwam bar, like a Springer Spaniel. <laughs> yeah. Someone put wigwam strain, and they put the phone number for the wigwam <laughs> so they can come get him. Well, is it, does he look like he's happy he, there? Dog wanted to have a beer. You know, come yeah, on. Just, yeah, just give the dog Yeah, death beer. by lettuce. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. Then they have a, the same thing happens with spinach or cucumbers. It's like, wouldn't you love to have that? Yeah, you die? know. Oh, lettuce, yeah. bad lettuce. Well, bad most, most, of, most of those health foods will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> bad cucumber. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. I hope I don't go like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she got into some bad spinach, and that was it. Yeah, I'm 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 still hoping for the, for the for the giant meteor. 
Yeah, just make it short and sweet, right? Short, sure, yeah, and spectacular too. Yeah. I mean, okay, you know. so I've always been fascinated with the JFK assassination just right. because it happened a couple of years before I was born, four years. Right. And I, I know it affected my parents. It affected everybody, you know. And um, so I remember when I was younger, my parents had a book, Life Magazine, it was a hardcover book, so that had all these pictures of the JFK presidency and the assassination and everything. Right. Maybe that's what spurred my fascination with it. But um, some photos are being sold that were taken that day, and I know a lot of people have seen these photos. Some of them I hadn't seen. Anyway, um, there. If you, I'm a huge, I'm interested in body language, and I like looking at that. When I look at an old photograph, I, I look at the looks on people's faces and everything. Okay. Anyway, the link is there, Grim. Yeah, I got... I, I, I wanna... I'm... Okay. Okay, now, in the one picture, this is just after he... Hours after he died, and Jackie Kennedy, they're waiting to swear in Lyndon B. Johnson, who was in on the assassination, all right? We all know that. Um, And just... You, she can't hide her fucking... Lady Bird Johnson does not hide her emotions this day. She was happy as shit that her husband was being sworn in as president. Standing next to this woman, Jack, in between her, uh, Lyndon Bain Johnson, you got Lady Bird, Lyndon, Lyndon, you got Jackie Kennedy. She's still wearing the same clothes she was wearing. She's got his blood on her clothes still on this. It's pink. The suit she's wearing is a pink suit. Right. You can't tell that because it's black and white photos, but just look at Lady Bird Johnson in these pictures, and even Lyndon's face, and he's in on the assassination. Right. right. I mean, it's just to me, it's just fascinating because it's like and they try to like blow it off, like oh, they were trying to comfort Jackie. I'm sorry, but in the one picture, she's freaking smiling. At Jackie Kennedy. The first picture. Right. The second picture it is. Second picture. Yep. Okay. I mean, I, you know, what a, I'm sure she was like, I mean, just, she couldn't hide her fucking excitement. <laughs> yeah, she still had the blood on her clothes, Jackie did in those pictures, because the suit, that's the same suit she was wearing when he was killed. But anyway, these went up for auction, but that's beside the point. That wasn't the reason I was fascinated by them. Who, who's, the, who's this creepy looking? See, see where the little mouse finger is there? Yeah. Who's that creepy? Who's they, that? they say who that is in pictures. It's, um... Hang on, let me go to the link again. It says officials can be seen looking on. She's looked into pictures. You're a creepy looking dude. Yeah, it's just weird. It's just bizarre because it's he's there in every every shot too. He's a he's a big wig of some sort, yeah. They wasted no time at all. It was like what, three no, hours? No, they wasted no time. They were leaving Dallas in Air Force One with this the swearing in took place. Yeah. So yeah, I was just it was just a thing that I saw this week that was like, wow. All these guys are kinda of creepy looking. Oh yeah, all these guys. <laughs> well you know Lyndon knows what went down. Oh he, sure he, he does. Was sure he yeah, does. Cyrus he Vance down. could be I don't, I don't know. That could be it could be one of Chicago. It's someone that was higher up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just cre uh, creepy. Yeah. Uh, they were in on it. The Johnsons were in on it. They knew what went down. It, it, yeah, there's the pink suit. You can see the color picture there. Yeah. But she couldn't contain her fucking pride there when he was being sworn in. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's yeah. like, I'm the first fucking lady, bitch. 
Yep. Yep. They weren't nice people. No. Not at all. So, it, it, okay, so the reason I think, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why he was assassinated, but the main one was this, he was going to expose all of it. He wasn't going to go along with their shit anymore. He wasn't going to do it anymore. He was going to expose it. His last speech before he was murdered, he, he said that. He was going to, that there should not be secret societies. You know what I mean? He was calling them out. They, right. they did not want... Oh, they didn't want him from the beginning, but... No. They really wanted him out of there. He wasn't going along with the program. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, yeah. The, the, like, Matt and Zach, or every once in a while, they'll ask me a question that's just like, where does this come from? But, who is the best president, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no such thing. You know how I feel about that? (laughs) You know how I feel about the president. Don't ask me who the best one was. (laughs) You know, and what the, how do you define best? You know, the best one that fucking murdered people, had the most wars, what, you know, what, what do you define, how do you define that? You know, best. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're none of them were any good. That, that's all. No. I mean, I, I say if I have to. Well, let's say you have to pick one, Mom. Like, they won't let me say none of them are good. They'll just be like, keep. No, you have to pick one. I'm like, I guess uh, Kennedy. You know, you know what I mean? But. You know? Yeah. How the hell could I have been so stupid to trust the groups that are advising him? Yeah. Exactly, Mama Taco. He. He did not like the secret shit. He didn't like it. He didn't. He want. He wanted to expose it. He had a change of heart. I think he actually had a conscience, you know, and he actually wanted to do good. And this to him was wrong. It was wrong to have this shadow government or whatever, you know. And it's still today. It, it hasn't changed. This is why they got rid of him. Sixty-two. Bunch of crusty old farts. Uh, Fucking oh my god! Well, and then then they go on to become great people. Lyndon Bain Johnson became president. Um, George George Bush Senior became president. He was in on it too. He was part of that group of thirty or whatever that knew the plan. So they go on to be great men. You know, looked upon as being great men and giving these positions positions of power. So, that Kennedy thing, it, it's far reaching, <laughs> pretty deep. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've I've seen documentaries on the assassination and like the way the security was very lax that day. On well, he's riding around in a convertible through. On purpose. Yes. You know, he's riding around a convertible through downtown Dallas there. Right. You know. <laughs> they knew, besides now we know it was all planned out. They wanted the security to be lax. They wanted to kill this dude. So they did it. It was a plan. 63, 62, 63. November of 63, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I, you so know, I think, you I, think if, I, I think, you know, if, I would certainly not pick Kennedy as, you know, I'd probably go like to Andrew Jackson or something. Yeah, he was pretty badass. He killed the banks. Yeah. <laughs> not so much, but he, <laughs> but he wanted to. <laughs> what? He, he didn't really, but he wanted to. Right. Tried to. Yep. <laughs> Did he end the Fed for a little bit or not? Well, he did, well there wasn't a Fed back then, but, uh, yeah, he got rid of the central bank the for a while. The central bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was, there was no Fed back then. They had, I forget what they call it, U.S. Bank or some kind of crap like that. Which, had, oh. again, had nothing to do with the U.S., but, yeah, all these external influences. Anyway, yeah, I wouldn't go with Kennedy. He was he was too socialist. But uh, yeah, 
I mean, everyone, a lot of people just go to him because he was killed or whatever. And he's like a current. He was like he he. People remember him. They don't remember Andrew Jackson. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sock puppet shot himself at the foot. Hey, my my son did that. <laughs> With a BB gun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm at, I, I, you know, this was last weekend, not this, two weeks ago. He, they were up with their dads, and Zach was out there with his BB gun. And up there, because he can shoot it up there, because they live up in the country, you know what I mean? Yeah. Out of city limits. Sure, sure. So he can go in the backyard and shoot the BB gun. So... He's out there. He ends up shooting himself in his big toe. <laughs> From close range, at close range, it gets embedded down in his toe. You know, Ow. the top part of his toe. Yeah. They were able to get it out, but I get this text. I'm like, your son shot himself in the foot. I'm like, <laughs> what? You know? This was two weeks ago. And he sends me this picture, and it's, you know, this, I can see the BB, BB in the toe still. I'm like, oh, that can't be good. It's embedded still. So anyway, they got it out, and he he was hurting for a little bit, but he he'll be fine. <laughs> it says, oh, I didn't think it was loaded. Famous last words. <laughs> famous <laughs> last words. That's that's I all. I can't that... tell you how famous those words are. Oh, I know, man. <laughs> oh my God, dude! Really? Lesson learned. Hopefully. God, with any luck. <laughs> Oh my All god, right. dude! That kid should not have operate like motorcycles or anything. Any like any kind of machinery. Kid. Just keep him away from machinery. Yeah. he's not made for any of that. He's not. <laughs> I mean, he can drive a car, okay, but anything oh, like oh man, when it comes to TV <laughs> yeah. guns or hold my beer, <laughs> anything like that. No skateboards. No, that kid is not meant to be a skateboard. That, no, no, it's just like he tried to skateboard. Uh, a month ago, road rash all over his leg. I'm like, dude, really? A skate? What made you think you could skateboard now? Never right. been able to do it before. You know? Oh, I thought I'd try it again. Well, I know. All right, buddy. So yeah, it's you know always something, but it's always something. So my friend posted this meme on Facebook. Five of Orwell's worst nightmares have come true. This is a meme. It's not like written in stone or anything. Number one, we've been dumbed down by the public education system. Duh, right? Number two, we've been indoctrinated by the corporate-owned mass media. Number three, we've, we've been socially engineered by Hollywood movies, pop culture, music, and TV programming. Four, we've been drugged, brainwashed, and robbed by Big Pharma and the American healthcare racket. Five, we've been tricked into thinking the U.S. is a democracy, not knowing it's a corporate oligarchy. I've known that, but yeah, most people sit there and say, oh, no, this is a democracy. We yep. got freedom of speech here. Vote freedom harder. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah vote harder. <laughs> you, can, you can assemble if you want to get tased and tear gas. Right. No, I, I mean, if you're supporting the government agenda, you can you can assemble all you want. Right. <laughs> but if you're not, yeah. Ask that girl that almost that did lose part of her arm, or almost did. At, uh, for the dapple thing. Was it Standing Rock or? Yeah, it was Standing Rock. Yeah. They weren't fucking around. She got totally injured from a rubber bullet, dude. I mean, oh, it was a, it was a, uh, what do you call them canisters? Uh, it was not a. Oh bullet. yeah, yeah, it was a smoke canister uh, or something. Smoke yeah, grenade. Worse yeah. than the rubber bullet. Oh yeah, much worse. It exploded on her basically. Right. And they, oh. they try to do that. They plan to do that. So. Well, they didn't like those people assembling from the get go. No, they did not. They did they not did want not. Them, any they, part they of them being there. People. They didn't let them peacefully assemble. Hell and no. People were, yeah, what? And they, and they were on private land. Yes. So no. a lot of good your democracy is doing you in that situation. It didn't yep. work. Exactly. They harassed those people. They did not give them peace to assemble. They didn't leave them alone and let them peacefully assemble. No, oh, they harassed them. Absolutely. They kept escalating it. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. The feds came right in there, and they're like, no, they didn't care it was private land. No. No. They don't care. You're going to run that pipeline through, through come hell or high water. Yep. If they want something, they'll they'll stop at nothing to get it. Yeah. So that's that's where the corporate oligarchy comes in. They have control and they'll fucking use it. Yeah, I remember that guy too, Kate. Yep, the uh, Occupy protester, the, the Oakland pigs. Yes. Damaged. <laughs> right, and they don't get in trouble for it. Yeah. No, this I'm sorry, but that freedom to freedom of speech and freedom to assemble are not are non-existent. Yeah, we were we were watching the Occupy for stuff pretty close here, in the RLM. Yeah, we were. And even at um, the festival, you got the three county sheriffs walking through there all the time. You know, right? Oh, well, they got they got to check it out. You know. Oh, yeah. If I, if you I, gotta check it out. Make yeah, sure you might have, you might have so, you might have somebody enjoying a plant in there. That's right. Oh yeah. I didn't <laughs> see anybody get arrested. They were just walking around because. People are really, if you see them, you know, oh, they're not smoking fucking joint right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like, my, I was, you know, I heard someone say, like, oh, they're not going to bug you if they smell a weed smell, you know. But if you walk up to one of them and say, hey, you want to buy some LSD? <laughs> it's story, you know. Um, yeah. But they're in uniform, I mean, you know. I'm sure there was undercovers in there. There ha- oh, there always is. Always is. Just always is. Even at Blue Ox. They even said, uh, you know, we have company. We have visitors. That's what they call them, visitors. Yeah. We have company or we have visitors, you know. Right. And they just want you to be aware of it. But when, I, when they said that at Blue Ox, they, like, announced it. On, one of the fucking musicians said it on the stage or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I'm like. I could pick. I picked out so many narcs last year. It wasn't even funny. They had a lot of them there too, and they were dumb though. They're stupid. You can tell because they do not look the part. It's like <laughs> wait, if you're smart, you really want to be undercover. Wait, let you let me, look let like me. a freaking hippie dude. Yeah. You look like a fucking clean cut preppy college kid, and your clothes are way too fucking clean. You're right. wearing the and wrong clothes. You your hairstyles. Yeah, you're, they're all, they're always wear. Hairstyle. You always wear the cop shoes. You like a sore thumb, dude. You are not undercover at all. You are totally in plain sight, buddy. Yeah. Let you me uh, let tell. me let me point something out to here to Gooberzilla in the chat. He said it made no sense that the Bundy supporters could not link up with the Dapple protesters. Well, here's the thing. Basically, if you if you went through the, the all the Bundy supporters, they were what you would consider right wingers. And if you went through the Dapple supporters, they were what you consider left wingers. <laughs> so so those two those two hook it up uh, although they were both, you know, fighting against the same enemy, um right. probably would have been fighting amongst themselves. Yeah. Just just because of the the difference of view there. And uh, most most of the, the dipple dappers, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> funny, wanna? So uh, I think it, it, you know, it, they they both want to argue about a different portion of who these people are allowed to control or not. <laughs> Who's, who these people are allowed to force to do a certain thing or not do a certain thing, as the case may be. Um, and if they both look at it objectively, they would see that, hey, our enemy is the same as their enemy. <laughs> but that's, right. not, that's not how it right. goes. Um, no, because everyone wants it. I don't know how to explain it, but well, they, they each have their they each have their goal, and and, right. and, a, and a lot of the Bundy people, I'm sure, were totally down on, on the, the North Dakota people, um, because. Well, that that's a right wing thing, oil, and and right, it is. and for and for the the North Dakota people, you know, the, these Bundys were were using public lands to do bad to, to do things that that they should have not been able to do, and uh, but the, it comes down to the same thing: the government's your enemy. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. So, pick how you want. Either way, we're going to play some music. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And, uh, 
it's not exactly quite summer yet. You know, it doesn't start to, for 20 more days, but uh, this is a summer song. Oh, yeah, boys and girls, fire it up, fire it up. That's disturbed. Uh, I've, I've been digging on that song lately. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I don't know if they have a real version of that, uh, that or not. That's just the, uh, the lyric video. But uh, excellent tune there by Disturbed. Fire it up. Before that, we had Halloween uh, doing Hocus Pocus by Focus. Uh, it's a, a strong version of that song. And we kicked it off with Joe Satriani and uh, Summer Song. Yipper, pepper. Yipper. <laughs> Oh, man. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. Good, solid. So, last weekend was awesome. I mean, the park is a beautiful park. So there's all these old oak trees, ancient oak trees. So, you have tons of shade, like, in the park, you know? Uh-huh. <clears throat> but I had to park, like, outside of the park. So the first night, I was, like, in bumfuck Egypt, my car. Okay. So, the second day, I'm, like, I go take a shower and everything, you know? And I come back, and I see some open spots closer. I'm like, oh, I'm parking closer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Closer to the park, so I can get to, and to carry my tent in there. And so, you know what I mean? Sure. And so, because it was super hot. I mean, to walk to your car, it's one thing if you're in the park where it's shaded, but as soon as you walk out in that parking lot, you start roasting. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it was 97 degrees outside. That's plenty, and so, plenty um, warm. That's plenty warm. Yeah, good thing there was a breeze. Like, the first part of Saturday, there was no breeze. So it was just like, oh, my God, it's so freaking hot, right? Then all of a sudden, the breeze picked up, and it was like, thank God, you know? And so then the third day, by the third day, I was as close as I ever got. <laughs> so I finally was able to move my car within a reasonable distance, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like, oh, uh, but it was super hot, but it was so fun. It was hey. a good time. Three days of music, you know, you can't go wrong. Right. Yeah. Yep. Great. So, anyway. Excellent. What else you got, Grim? What else have I got? I got, I got, I had to, you know, I had to switch. I, I was, I've been using this thing, uh, plug-in, you know, it's kind of like a pocket or read it later thing. And for yeah. whatever reason, last week it stopped working on me, so I had to find a different mm. one and load it up there. So I had to move all my stuff over and I'm. I'm a little disorganized. <laughs> You'll get it figured out. No, I got it figured out. It was just a, it was just a little, little confusing, a little disorganized. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, here, here's some news. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, it it's on HuffingtonPost.com. Porn. Leads to school shootings. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> porn, porn leads to school shootings, GOP congresswoman says. <laughs> Jeez, uh, really? It's a, I think it's a big part of the That's spike goofy. in such attacks, Representative Diane Black asserts. Loony freaking tunes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it starts off, does anyone know what kind of porn Diane Black is watching? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, must be some kind of um, snuff porn. I, I don't know. It says, Whatever it is, the 67-year-old Black, who was running for governor of Tennessee, said it's a big part of what is driving the spike in school shootings. Which is a lie, because there's not a spike in school shootings. But, uh, all right, going with their story here. Uh, during a meeting last week with the local pastors, Black raised the issue of gun violence, as if guns are violent, uh, in schools. And why it keeps happening. Pornography, she said. <laughs> Pornography. All right, it's available on the shelf. On the shelf? When you walk into a grocery store? I've never seen porn in a grocery store. 
I don't. Maybe I'm shopping at the wrong grocery stores. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a grocery but, store. What? This lady's a whack job. It's She's a, one of them right wing, ultra fucking Christian, like all oh, uptight bitches. She says, you know, yeah, she she's says, never got any in her life. She's never got any real good sex in her life. So she's all like, oh, it has to be bad. She says, yeah, you have to reach up to get it, but there's yeah, pornography okay. there. Whatever. At a grocery store. Whatever, lady. Store. Get off your high fucking horse. Anyway, uh, she continued, she all of this is available without parental guidance. I think it's oh a big God. part of the root uh, cause. Uh, I'm sorry, but any 14-year-old back in the fucking 60s... <laughs> Their dad had Playboy, right? Absolutely. I mean, come on. Playboy I mean, and Penthouse and Hustler. Yeah, and... all that stuff. So yeah, it's a lot. Anyway, this lady's a whack job. She's okay, a, oh, it, she, it goes on. She, when she she squeaks when she fucking walks. Dude. She's a <laughs> fucking whack job. <laughs> it goes on to say that Black did not clarify what it is about porn that she thinks is leading to school right. massacres. See, you can't make a statement <laughs> like that without like what. Okay, what do you got to back this up, lady? Besides your own fucked up head. It says, well, beyond naughty movies, Black said school shootings naughty are movies. on the rise because of the deterioration of family, mental okay. illness, and violent movies. Okay. But again, as well, I, isn't that special? Uh, again, as I pointed out, there is no rise in school shootings. There's no spike in school shootings. See, but they say that. They want you to think that, right? Right, and they put it in there as if it were fact. Right. Um, right. They, Even though it's not, right? It's still there. So anyone reading that that doesn't know different is going to think that there's a rise in school shootings. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're predisposed to want to believe that in the first place, then, then you're, you're going to want to believe that because, well, you... You know, hate anybody that's got a gun or uh, well, whatever. Um, see, in this, it says contrary to Black's take, experts say poor social, economic, and cultural conditions are the primary drivers of gun violence. They keep using that term, gun violence. I got a gun sitting right here. It's never, it's never tried to be violent to me at any time, at, ever, ever. It never even looked at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enacting policies to improve those conditions for people, along with reducing access to firearms, would go a long way, uh, according to these, uh, whoever these people are, experts, experts say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just thought of something. Experts say. What's that? Uh, my mom, I remember when I was like, I don't know how old I was, but my mom had Say Girl. Yeah. Magazine, like a few of them, not a lot of them, but like, you know, remember when it, that came out? Like, because, you know, the women were like, well, there's Playboy, we need Play Girl. Yeah, why <laughs> like, not? Let them have it, you sure? <laughs> oh my god. Some of the pictures, though, were just like hilarious. Like, they'd have like a naked guy in like chaps. <laughs> in a cowboy hat. This is like really. <laughs> and, and, was, and, and was that was that sexy? Oh my god! <laughs> I remember. Oh my god! That I just I just remembered this. I haven't thought of this for a long time. Oh my god! That is so funny. Oh my god! That's hilarious. Uh, I don't even think they make Playgirl, do they? Do they still I make that? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know what they make. They probably have all kinds of them for women now. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they have whatever they have. It was the thing. I'm sure my mom was just like on the bandwagon, you know, like, oh. <laughs> you go the big, men have their Playboys. I'm gonna go get my Playgirl. <laughs> you, know, you know, like like to have they have um what it was what's the big tit one um. Oh. Um, uh, big and big and no, that was that was just on. Uh, Oh, <laughs> uh, on on on, on uh, what was that? <laughs> that with Al Bundy. What was that show's name? Um, Mary with Children. Yeah, yeah. He had that. He had that one. Biggins. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they probably have one for women. Big dicks or something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not for women, though, probably anymore. That's probably for who knows. But well, for anybody but, that likes dick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And now we're not talk we're not talking Cheney here either. Oh, no, we're not. 
so funny. Oh, yeah. my God. So, uh, like, yeah, that I, was I, during I, the, you know, the 70s when the women were all like, we want equal, we want, you know, you guys have Playboy, we're going to do Playgirl. All you right. Know? Come on. Yeah, you, no. you know. Cool, go for it. Yeah. No, or they'd have a guy like, like you know, a naked guy with construction hat on. Like the village people, <laughs> except naked. So yeah, fireman, you know, no and a, a fireman and an Indian chief and a, and a. <laughs> I'm sure they con, had it all. Construction guy. Who's who, who was the other one? There was there was four of them, right? There was the cop. There was the Indian dude. There was the construction worker. The navy guy. Navy guy. Oh, right, that's the fourth one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And the cowboy. No, so, I, I think they had them on the, uh, the the Married with Children show, too. <laughs> they probably did. They did. I remember that episode. And that cop had the cheesiest fucking 70s mustache. Oh, my God. It was so funny because that one of that hockey coaches, I'm like, you should tell your coach that he has a 70s porn mustache. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> he does. <laughs> Just like, really, dude? What? Are you in the 70s? <laughs> Oh my God, it's so funny! All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about this story here. Uh, it's a story, I guess. Whatever. It's an article. Uh, it's on Oraz O R R A Z Z dot com. Um, yeah. Okay, the title is FBI to America. Reboot okay. your routers right now. Now I, I saw. Okay, I, 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 as soon as I saw this headline, I was like, "What are you like, assholes?" Don't do it. What are yeah. you? What are you assholes up to? And then I saw right. Hal. Hal had posted something over there on uh, on the Twitter about this. This this this, this smells fishy. <laughs> but the thing is, eventually you're going to have to reboot your router. Uh, so whether you you do it right now and because of this or some other time in the future, uh, you're you're eventually going to have to reboot your router. Uh, uh, so well, whatever they're planning whether it happens at this point or, or sometime down the road. Anyway, it says, the FBI has issued a dire warning to everyone who has a router in their home. The Internet Crime Complaint Center, <laughs> that's really a thing, um, sent a rare public service announcement declaring foreign cyber actors have compromised hundreds of thousands of home and office routers uh, and other network devices worldwide. The hackers are using a VPN filter malware to target small office and home office routers. The FBI said VPN filter is able to render small office and home office routers inoperable. So if you reboot them, they, they're going to stop working? Is that what they're trying to say here? The, the FBI warns that malware can potentially also collect information passing through the router. Uh, detection and analysis of the malware's network activity is complicated. By the use of by its use of encryption, uh, the Fed recommends any of the owners of small office and home routers reboot the devices to temporarily disrupt the malware. Temporarily disrupt it for what? Till it boosts back up? Uh, and, <laughs> no and, kidding. And, and aid God, the potential man. identification of infected devices. <laughs> they, 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 by because your router's not going to work, not going to work anymore, right? Is that what's anyway? So they all have all oh, shit, also my have router to. router will still work. They also have to consider disabling remote management, which you should have disabled anyway, unless right. you have a specific need to use it. Um, and then also, use encryption, which you better damn well be doing anyway. Uh, upgrade your firmware. Of course, it says firmware here, um, but they mean firmware. And yeah. choose new and different passwords, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty much the best practice anyway. Uh, yeah. The, the IC3, <laughs> IC3, formerly known as the Internet Fraud Complaint Center, was renamed in October 2003 uh, to include this kind of, or 2003, really, that long ago? To include this kind of attack. Yeah. Their stated mission is to provide the public with a reliable, convenient reporting mechanism to submit information to the FBI uh, concerning suspected uh, Internet facilitated criminal activity. Well, the FBI is doing that. Should we just report the FBI to you guys and develop <laughs> effective alliances with law enforcement and industry partners? 
today that yeah, means... Yeah, you know, they're always doing that, dude. They, they got it all... It's just a scam. It's just a ploy to get your information. It, it says today that means telling yeah. you to reboot your routers. Right. Which means it, it, if they were trying to slip something in to your router... You right. would have, probably have to reboot it in order for their whatever they were slipping into your router to, work. To, right. uh, to get activated. Right. Yep. Exactly. And whenever they tell you to do something, don't do it. Yeah. I just yeah. don't do, do the it. opposite. I'm like, whatever. Never reboot your router again, except you. Like I said, eventually you're going to have to reboot your router. Right. Uh, so. <laughs> but don't do it because they told you to do it. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Anyway, there's wow. that for you. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, Hunky. so uh, be suspicious. Be be very suspicious. Yes. This, these these guys are not to be trusted in, in no, any No, at all. Any manner. My, oh, I just got like a little chill up my spine. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Um. Yeah. What? That don't sound right. Because they're fucking assholes. You just can't. Oh. They're slimy, evil. Blech. Yeah. Snakes. Snakes in the grass. They are. The lunatic yep. is on the grass. Okay, I yep, came across this. Are. I came across this article, and I'm not. I think. Well, let me just give you a little bit, and then I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> okay. All right. It's on SputnikNews.com, uh, another one of my favorite Russian sites. I, I like a lot of the Russian sites. Anyway, Russian scientists develop unique trap for light. So, based at the National Research Nuclear University, a research team led by Professor Yuri Rakovic has developed a tunable micro-resonator for hybrid energy states between light and matter, using light to control the chemical and biological properties of molecules. You know what this means to me? It's, it is, I mean, we're talking, we're going to Star Trek here. You, you remember the, the, the replicators that they had in Star Trek, and, and also the, the uh, transporters, and the holodecks? Sounds like it's going that direction. I don't know how quickly they're they're getting there because at this point in time they're working with certain single molecules of light and and they're being able to trap them in an area and then convert some of that light into actual matter some of the energy light energy into actual matter a, a state of matter not solid necessarily matter but they're it's getting there um anyway it says an article uh, on research results have been published in the review of uh, scientific instruments in editor's pick column. The micro resonator is a two mirror trap for the light with the mirrors facing each other with several, uh, within several hundred nanometers, which that's like nothing, of course, you know, that's, you couldn't even get a piece of paper in there. Right, um, right. A, a, a light quantum caught in the trap would form a localized state of electromagnetic wave. By modifying the resonator's form and size, operators can control the spatial distribution of the wave as well as the duration of the photon's life within the resonator. The new invention makes it possible to control chemical and biological properties of the molecules with the help of light. The practical importance of this research is largely due to the uniqueness of the resultant construction. The micro resonator can serve as the basis for new generation instruments that can be used on biological and chemical sensing, as well as to control the speed of chemical reactions and energy transfer efficacy. The high marks given to the instrument are explained by its novelty and effectiveness, university, uh, universality, and uniqueness as a research tool. Um, where does that part get to about the uh, turning it into matter? Um, so the resonance interaction between constant quantum emitters and localized electromagnetic fields is interest of of interest primarily because it provides the opportunity to control the properties of the light matter hybrid states. The light and matter in these systems uh, form an intermediate uh, state with charged particles, which are controllable with the help of optical emission. Uh, one of the ways to induce these states is to place an emitting or absorbing uh, molecules on a resonator. So, 
they're just they're just at the at the uh, very very beginning of, of doing what they're doing here with this. But but I'm telling you, this this look this is sounding very very Star Trekky to me. Um, yeah, it is. And uh, what the hell happened there? Why did I get that all in there? And and so if they could actually do this, this would be like ultimately cool to be able to you know use it as just 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 as a replicator, you know, to be able to 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 replicate. Right objects within it, uh, which is certainly a step ahead of the 3D printing. Um, yeah, that's right. Beat me up, Scotty. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but it, j just imagine a holodeck. <laughs> wow, that would be crazy. You know, that would be so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if you could just go, I want to go to Paris. Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> no. or, Let me yeah. fucking kick ass. Absolutely. Or just do whatever, or just say, you know, I want to. I want I want a ham sandwich, and then zoop, and it makes you a ham yeah, sandwich. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's how it was supposed to be. Like, remember the Jetsons? Oh, sure. Yeah. You're supposed to have like instant food. You know, just push a button. Remember? Right. Yeah. Or just Jetsons. or just talk to it. Why you don't need to push a button? All right. You just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just just tell yeah. it. That's what I want. Or, or right. like the holodeck, you know, you can be make it any any scenario you want. Okay, so let's say you're like trying to diet, and you're like on a diet plan. You know, you have your robot program. You'd be like, give me a chocolate or donut. They'd be like, no, you can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You could like program it to control your eating habits. I, uh, <laughs> Are you sure you need that other donut? Or, sure or, or they, or they could give you a, you know, a, a, the virtual type of donut here. Eat this donut, but it has nothing in it. You know, right, right. You it's feel like you're, you're eating a donut, but but you get no, um, <laughs> none, none of the fat or calories out of it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Crazy. Goober Goober still wants spaceships. He he don't care. Yeah, he does. He, he, he's he, he still wants the spaceships. Man. He's like, yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> I mean, they, I I know spaceships exist. I know sure. that already. I mean, they do exist. There is no doubt about that. They do exist. There's, that's true. That is correct. Right. But, you know, the U.S. government, they're not going to let anybody have that information or that technology. On how no, to they're, not, they're not, they're not going to let you go oh, for a ride. No. They don't want it, the average person just to be out there in their backyard making a spaceship now, do they? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, that, no. They'd be like, what? Yeah, you're better off finding inter interdimensional doorways. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, that could be a thing. I mean... It could be a thing to delve into as far as how to do it, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, there, I, mean I don't know. Those, dude. Something, those are those already right. those already exist in nature anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, let's hear some music cool. here. Um, let's do that. And and uh, taking you back to a uh, place you were. Not that yeah. long ago. Yeah, baby. I was here. I was there. She was <laughs> there. I was. I was there in the audience. Oh, yeah. Brand new there from Hailstorm. That's called Uncomfortable. Uh, they've got a brand new album dropping in July called Vicious. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, good stuff. That, 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 did I mention the name of that? Uncomfortable. Yeah, she just wants to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> Before that, Leo Maraccioli uh, doing his. Uh, also, just uh, both of these, both of those tracks just came out today. Uh, Disco Inferno by Leo Maraccioli. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, he tore it up. And we kicked it off there with Phil Lesh in the Terrapin Family Band doing The Wait, the band, the old band song. Um, yep. And, uh, with Levon Helm's daughter singing with them. At a show that Moose Girl was in attendance. Last weekend. 
Last weekend. That last, well, this oh last my very, gosh, very, it was so last, amazing. Last Friday night awesome. while I was here uh, freaking with y'all, she was out there freaking with uh Phil Lesh and his sons. And his sons and, and many others. And Devon Helm's daughter. I mean, all I'm saying, you know. Uh, amongst many and others. And some good ganja. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was nice. It was very nice. <laughs> Awesome. Good time, for sure. Okay, so I found this article a couple of weeks ago. All right. And it surprised me. I, and not really, but it did a little bit. Just because um, I'm from Wisconsin and Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, I live in Wisconsin. Um, and I've been up to the Apostle Island. I, the one I've been to is Madeline Island, which is the biggest one out of all of them. Okay. Anyway... Uh, this is from Wisconsin Public Radio, uh, May 14th, 2018. I think we talked about this maybe, but I'm going to talk about it again. A recent study of 35 national parks from the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore had the highest concentration of microplastics, which is surprising because it's on Lake Superior. Okay. So this kind of like, I was like, what? Well, that can't be. Right, I was I I was doubted it at first, right? You know, before I read the article or whatever. It says so. The National Park Service teamed up with South Carolina's Clemson University, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Marine Debris Debris Program, in 2015. So there's actual. I mean, that was really hard to say. That's a lot of words there. Um. Anyway. Um. Park Service staff and volunteers collected samples of 37 postal beaches, said the study's lead author, Stephanie Whitmire. Anyway, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but they're saying that the Apostle Islands on Lake Superior has the highest level of microplastics. And when they say, when they, what they mean by microplastics is plastic does not biodegrade, it just breaks down, it just breaks apart. Yeah. And so these so what's going on is the fish and the any people that swim in that that lake or if you eat fish out of that lake, you're gonna be ingesting plastic probably on some level. Oh sure. And that's even that's not just in those people in that area or fish caught out of that area, but that's this is going on all across the, the world. Um, there are plastic um, floating islands that wildlife, aquatic wildlife, get trapped in. You know, and once an aquatic, a wild animal is trapped in something, it, it's going to die because it's not able to function normally. And I mean, I go to Quick Trip, so now I'm like on this mindset that. Like, I was going to Quick Trip to get coffee last weekend because I wasn't at home, right? So I had to go buy coffee somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And so at Quick Trip, they have these plastic straws that they give you just so you can stir your coffee. And I remember back in the day, those used to be made out of wood, right? Right, yeah. You're like now they're made, which thing. is biodegradable. Wood is biodegradable. Right. Plastic is not. So yeah. now they have plastic stir straws. And it's like, you know what? But, but, I, but, think about plastic it. Plastic is overused. Th it's think, it's, think, it's think, think, you stir your coffee. But, you, but wait, yeah. wait, think it's about it. It's a plastic wrapper, <laughs> and then you stir your coffee with it, and you throw it away. But but think about it. Back, back when you had them, them wooden stir sticks, yeah. you had styrofoam cups. Right. Yeah. True. So now but they got the, the cups are still styrofoam though. Are they not paper now? No. Oh, they're still okay. Styrofoam. Quick check the, the cups are styrofoam still. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it, yeah. All right. The well, problem I have with plastic stir sticks is I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, okay, I'm going to stir my coffee with this for one second, and I'm going to throw it away. It's like you know what I have a. I got a new coffee mug that has a, a cover on it. That's, you know, you, you screw it on. Yeah. What I'm going to do, instead of using it, or see what that quick, I, I was using my actual coffee mug at the 
crypto. I always bring that with me. I use my own log as a crypto. I don't use the site of the top, right? Yeah. Which is good because I'm not wasting a cop, you know, creating waste, right? Right. But anyway, that plastic stir stick, though. So from now on, I'm not going to use the stir stick at all. I'm yeah, just, just going to put it up. that covers on tight and shake the thing. Right, so it's like a little thermos. Right. right. I mean, the overuse of plastic bugs me. Because, and plus, I'm using, the, it's wrapped in a plastic wrapper, so that the plastic film that it's on is waste, and then the actual plastic stir stick. And it's like, you know what? This is an absolute waste. Right. They shouldn't even make those things anymore. Or just go they back should to just the, have wooden stir sticks. So right. You know it's biodegradable. Absolutely. I mean, they could, they it, could just make it about a paper. It seems like a small thing, right? A stupid stir stick that's for your coffee, right? Yeah. But I'm using it for one second. Right. Then, you know, millions and millions of them, they, they add up. Exactly. And it's like, we, we have to rethink things, people. You well, know, and, I mean... And, and on a, on a uh, unrelated but very similar topic... Yes? They're finding opioids in in seafoods up in right. up up in the the Pacific Northwest. Right, and that's because people just flush their meds or shit and shit. Or or they're just so drugged up and they piss it out or right exactly uh, whatever. Yep. Um, right, it gets into the people have been flushing their meds or whatever, and it gets into the water and they can't filter it. It, it, it it's not something you can filter, really. You know. Oh, they probably could if they used a, a fine enough filter, but I mean, we're you're right. talking about millions of of, <laughs> of gallons right. of uh, you know, billions of gallons of of wastewater. Um, so right. it's it, we've been talking about that for a while. But uh, yeah, um, according to this yeah. here, now they're they're finding oxycodone. Um, of course in, they are in mussels and salmon. And, yeah, uh, it's in your fucking food. It's so depressing, but <laughs> no one intended it. So is that up all through the Puget Sound up there? Right. And, it's uh, so it's such a bummer because I've been up through the Puget Sound. Puget Sound. I've been to Washington State. Yeah. And it's it was gorgeous. This was like 25, 30 years ago. And in that time, I'm lucky to have seen it during that time because now, you know, we're 30 years later, it's pretty bad all over. Everywhere, like I just told you, Lake Superior, the Apostle Island, has the highest percentage of microplastics in its water, which you wouldn't think, because that's supposed to be a pure lake, right? Right. Freshwater lake. It ain't freshwater lake anymore. Not if it's got all that microplastics in it. But bodies of water can heal themselves. It's going to take a long time. I mean, we're talking a long time, hundred hundred of years. Yeah, Goober says the the mutated frogs showed up in the '90s, and apparently yep. now, apparently now, according to Alex, anyway, they're yeah. they're, they're gay frogs now. <laughs> really? Come on! <laughs> that doesn't matter. That's like a fucking non-point. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> did I play that? Focus that, on the fucking did, problem. Did, not did, 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 fucking problem. <laughs> Didn't what? I play? Didn't I play that Alex Jones? The yeah, we the frog did. Gay. We did. The I know gay. we did. <laughs> I know we did. I remember we did. It's like three years ago or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we've been doing a show for almost ten years. It's like really, oh I don't know. What's God. Going on. <laughs> we played that song. I have. Like, anyway, so you know, I, I don't know. Maybe people are going to start eating, trying to eat mussels up there, um, so they can get some of that that free oxycodone. Yeah, you know, hey, <laughs> it'd be cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! They pass that shit out like candy, though. Something has to be wrong when they're passing out meds like candy. Oh well, it's you know they they get a bump from every fuck yeah from, from every sale. So your doctor um, does too. The doctors do. Yeah. yeah. Drug companies are like the sluts of the fucking medical industry. <laughs> I, forget, I forget who brought it up here today in the chat, but they were talking about the BIS. Yeah. You know, the Bank of International Settlements. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I why, why is this doing that? Uh, so I brought back up the uh, the fact that, of course, you know who runs the BIS. And I think no. Rob, Rob said, oh, it's the uh, board of directors. 
And I said, yeah, that's what they tell you. You know who really runs it? <laughs> um, Bill Gates? It's the Rothschilds. Okay, well, and, I was and, close. And, and so I, I didn't, um, I, I did find some people that say, said that, but what I came across that was I thought was better. Yeah, there you go, the gay frog remix. Thanks, Goober. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I, I came across this site. It's humansarefree.com. And the, the name of the article is List of Banks Controlled, Owned or Controlled by the Rothschilds Family. And, and the list is humongous. Well, you can't name them all. It's basically all of them. Yeah. And, 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 and as you, I'm sure, understand, realize, the United States Federal Reserve Bank... <laughs> Bastards. United States Federal Reserve is one of those that is on on this particular list. Well, of course they are. And, and of course, Deutsche 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 Bank out of Germany. Deutsche um, Deutsche. All all of them are on here. Um, and uh, let's see, they have Britain listed. Let me Deutschland. see. Deutschland isn't that the name of Germany? Deutschland. Yeah, Deutsch Deutschland. <laughs> okay. Deutschland. Hey, Grim said it, Hans. Not me. Grimner said it. Not me. Yeah, but. But they run them all. They run. I'll, if, if, yeah, they here, do. Here, you guys take a look through, through this list of banks. I knew. I knew that. You, I don't even need to look You tell the me. List. I already know they do. What What don't they run and control? What? They don't. They, they're what, nothing. What, what is there that they don't run and control? Just look through. Just Just look through this list of banks here. Um, all right, I'm clicking. It's just like, it, it's a huge, list. huge, long list of banks. Bank of Japan, oh, yeah, all Bank of Jamaica, Central Bank of Kenya, Bank of Korea, yeah. <laughs> Uruguay, Lithuania, Luxembourg, uh, Macau, whatever. You pick a country. Uh, well, they control you it. You pick a country except for yep. except for right. Iran, Syria, and North uh -huh. Korea. Iran. Syria, Syria and North Korea. Imagine that. Right who are who are the ones Kuwait's that? On that uh, what? I was wondering. Wait, Iran and Iraq are on there. Iran is on there. Yeah. And Iraq. <laughs> well, I know Iraq is on there now. Iran <laughs> now. is on there. <laughs> uh, Syria is not on there. Syria is not on there, and I, I, Iran is on there. Central Bank of the Iran is on there. They didn't used to be on there, but they're on there now. Okay. Yep, they uh, are. Or they got even Kazakhstan <laughs> is on there. <laughs> the, yeah. Even Fiji. I mean, Fiji. Do you guys know where that is? It's in the South Pacific, like, like Fiji. Really? Right. You just go. You just you know. There's, there's 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 not too many banks, not too many countries where the central bank, a central fake money producer, right, is not these guys. So this is this is it, people. So even the Seychelles, the Seychelles Islands. So if you don't think that that everything yeah. is being run uh, by them. Um, it says, also, most people living in the United States have no clue that the Internal Revenue oh, no Service clue. the Internal Revenue Service is a foreign agency. To be more accurate, the Internal Revenue Service is a foreign private corporation of the yes. International Monetary Fund and is a yes. private army of the Federal Reserve. Yes, it is. <laughs> the, Hello. The privately owned company, controlled by Rothschilds, Rock, Rockefellers, and Morgans, prints the money for the U.S. government, which pays them interest for the favor. This means that if uh, we would reset the nation's debt today, it would begin reprinting money. We would be in debt to the Fed from the very first dollar loaned to our government. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Very true. It's, it all comes back to the Rothschilds. It always does. Always uh, does. It always does. Always. Always. And the Queen of England. Because the Rothschilds are the Queen's banker. Right. And, the, and then you, you throw in the, the, the Pope, the Vatican, in there. Yep. Um, they're in there. Right there. <laughs> it, that's the three. Rothschilds, the Queen, and the Pope. Which the Pope means the Catholic Church. Yeah, the Vatican. As a whole. Va Vatican City. Yes. 
tiny little area that that controls it, just like which the, does not have the same rules as anywhere. There, just DC is a city state. The Vatican is a city state as well. DC is just like the Vatican. Right. It's just considered to be a city state. And, Most and, people don't know that or understand. You wouldn't know this or understand this unless you researched it. And in but, each of them, each yeah. of them, you can find uh, the Egyptian they, symbology. Yes, uh, the, the obelisk. Yeah. And they all have their own set of laws. They do not have the same laws as every other. That's why they DC is set apart. They're not called a state because they're a city state which has their own laws, just like Vatican City is the same way. DC is just like Vatican City. Right. Exactly like it. And they have the obelisk in D.C., and they have the obelisk in Vatican City, in Rome. Well, in Rome, but it's Vatican City, it's D.C., it's like D.C., it's a city-state, so it's separate from everything else. It's its own set of rules. London is a city-state as well. Right. London's the same way. And they have an Egyptian obelisk there. Not the city of... They took the obelisk from Egypt and brought it to London. Not the city called London, but the thing, no. the corporation right. called the city of London. Yes, correct, correct. yes. <laughs> they, Not the whole they of make, London. They, 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 the part they, of London is the city-state, just like D.C. It's a separate area, just like Vatican City is a separate area. They make it totally confusing for a specific reason. <laughs> yes, they do. For a reason. It's quite enough. To keep you confused as to what the hell's really yes. going on. Right. Um, That's why D.C. is a they, – they, we're supposed to think of D.C. as an actual state, but it's not. It's actually the 50 – if it was a state, it would be, it have to be the 51st state. Right, but they wouldn't want to be controlled by the United no. States Constitution. They have their own Constitution. Hell no. Hell no. They want to be separate. They're above the United States. Yeah. The city-state of D.C. is like a remote – uh, city state of London, basically. Right. It's being controlled by London. It always has been. Always has been. Always. Even from the beginning. From 17, or whenever they built that fucking shit. The maze and the... the it's uh, D.C., if you look at a map of D.C., you'll see it. It's all planned out. They built it purposely to be it. And the same with the Vatican. Right. Yep. Yep. And it's in <laughs> London, too. They, they, they've, all, they've all got, like I said, all that Egyptian symbology. They also yep. have all the Illuminati symbology. And where the queen wears the bee on yeah. her her gown. Oh, right. That's Very, Egyptian symbology. Totally. Yep. Totally. And uh, this, the city-state of London is mapped out exactly almost to a T as a city-state of D.C. and as a Vatican. Well, there, there are a lot of uh, British archaeologists, so... <laughs> For whatever reason, <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> and, anyway, um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna jam some more tunes right now. And, uh, yeah, let's do that. Hope you guys are having an awesome freaky Friday night. Absolutely. You know, it's we're here. We we survive another week. And this. Not gonna what? Here's to the crazy ones. Why you waste your time on that stupid picture? He tried to escape. <laughs> Yes, indeed. That's the Chamber Brothers there. Uh, that was originally a Chloe request from about a year and a half ago, and I re-requested it just this week. Um, <laughs> so, so there's your request. I, I told you we'd get to it eventually, Chloe. It only took 18 months. Anyway, before that, we heard uh, Bird is the Word from the movie Full Metal Jacket and the uh, scenes from that. That was a Hansel Judge Dredd request there. And we kicked it off with John 5 and the Creatures and... Here's to the crazy ones. <laughs> yeah. So we always get to your I'll song. It, it, may, it may take it may take a couple of years, but we'll get to your song. <laughs> Eventually, but a couple of years. That's a long time. That was only eighteen months, so <laughs> that, well, really? <laughs> oh God. 
<laughs> well, sometimes do, you, that, do you have a way of weeding out the list, Grim, or do you just keep everything in there? Do I have a way of weeding it out? Um, I could weed it like, out, I suppose, but... Uh, I mean, do you have a way of showing, like, I played this song, or I didn't play it, you know what I mean? Oh, when I play like it, I take... Can, t- have, can you tell if you played it already or not? When, okay. when, when I play it, I take it out of the list. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. That being said, it still goes back a long way. Yes, that does. That's, like, almost too long. <laughs> so what I do in that case is I usually re-request, because then it will say... Your request was already, you already requested, but it's been moved to the top, right? Isn't that true? Yeah, then? yeah, exactly. So if you re-request it, then it will move it up in the list. Like if he forgets to play it or something. Oh, forget, but I just it don't get to it. It wasn't on purpose when he didn't play it. I don't forget. I just don't get to something, you know. I mean, right, there's, more, right. there's more requests than there is time. Exactly. So if you really want to hear a song, re-request it. That's one trick I've learned. Yeah, and it works good, too. It does, yep. Because when I because because you know. now when um, when somebody re-requests, it puts a note in there and the list says oh. this was originally requested by X and has now been re-requested by Z. Oh, cool! So oh, nice. So I can see, you know, which which ones have been people are really wanting to see because they've it's been re-requested. Right. If they're really <laughs> waiting to hear a song, then you can just, if you're really waiting to hear it, you can just re-request or repost it, you know. Sure, sure. Re-request works good if you know you already requested it because then it, like, draws attention to it, like, you know. Yeah, it gets it, gets it up to the top of the list. And... Right, right. So that's just, in, you know, putting it out there in case someone didn't know that or anybody didn't know that. Um, and, and I didn't even know that until I learned that, you know. There you go. By re-requesting the same song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Um. <laughs> yeah. So I w- I got back to work on Tuesday and I could barely fucking talk on the phone. I'm like, oh my god, my voice is trashed. Like I try not to hoot and holler, but sometimes you just have to. You just get so happy and excited that you know. Sure. I mean, it was stellar last weekend. I'm like, wow. It was amazing music. I mean, all around. Like, all the bands were awesome, you know. But that Phil West one, that that one particular song, I'm glad they have that good video of it because that was really cool. Yeah. That was, and Phil looked good. I mean, he's like 74 years old. I mean, he's still playing. And those two lead guys on the guitars were his sons. Right. Right. Not the drummer, but those two other guys were his kids. Right. They do have the his one the younger call them guy. Kids, but I mean, kind of, you, you call them kids, but they're like forty. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. I mean, the one his son is Graham Lesh. He's got his own band that they also played. They're called Midnight North, I believe. Yeah. And um, I missed them. I saw part of them actually, but yeah, they're really good. Yeah. Yeah. So check that out, but. I trash my voice totally. <laughs> I should, yeah, well, I, I that happens. At, that happens at concerts. What? That happens at concerts. Yes, it does. Especially when you see many really good shows like oh, Frogleg. Yeah. I had to cheer for Frogleg. I was like, who hollered for them? I mean, they were amazing. Like, I really that was my favorite set for dancing. Frogleg tore it up, dude. Awesome. They tore it up. I mean, I, w- I was loving it because I was dancing so hard. So, awesome. um, when's when's the next festival? Um, Blue Ox coming up here in Eau Claire. And when, when is that? June 14th, 15th, and 16th. All right. So, All right. not this, not two weeks from now. Yeah, yes, it's two weeks. It's going to be freaking awesome. Not next week, <laughs> but the week after. Yes, exactly. Next weekend is my kids' graduation party. All right. In the cities, and then the weekend after that is Blue Ox. So yeah, it's going to be my breathing, take a breath. I can finally breathe moments. You know, getting the, all this graduation party and graduation stuff behind me. You know. Right, right. It's a new start. <laughs> Very cool. Right. You know, it's going to be a good. A lot of my friends from Montclair are going there. I'm going to camp by them this year. I'm going to be in the same campsite as them. 
So it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Yeah. I know exactly where they're camped at. So I can go right there. I'm going to park in the field, but I'm going to walk my tent into the, into the, um, the campground. Oh, that'll work. Because yeah. I go home every day and take a shower. It's in Eau Claire. I mean, I'm going to go home and take a shower, guys, in my own shower. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, some people are like, oh, the showers here are free. I don't care. I'm like, no, I'm going home. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Absolutely. And besides, you know, you can go home and make, make lunch and it costs like nothing. Right, and I can go to Quick Trip and I can make my coffee and come here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Chillax for a while, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. You would love it. No, oh, maybe not, but you're not a crowd person, but. Right. It's well, really awesome. But they do, for. I'm just saying this now, there's going to be a live stream of it. There was last year, so you guys can. Watch that. It'll be going on live. Okay, and, then. Uh, maybe you'll see me in the audience. Sure, maybe. You know, you never know. She'll be out there shaking her booty. I will. Something to look and for. And the string dusters are there. Oh, my God. They're like, oh, I love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me uh, hit this article real quick here. All right, let's do that. Uh, this is on ZeroHedge.com. Title right. is, Why You should never use Wikipedia. Me? <laughs> you, me, everybody else. All uh, right. Well, nobody should ever use Wikipedia. The, <laughs> the, uh, the latest report about Wikipedia's corruption comes from a great investigative journalist, Craig Murray, who had been in the UK Foreign Service from 1984 through 2004, and who was forced out in 2004 because, having been since 2002 UK's ambassador to Uzbekistan, had decided to whistleblow instead of accept the corruption by his own Uzbekistan government. Wikipedia's article about him says that immediately prior to posting, he had involved part, been involved in participating in enforcement of prior economic sanctions against Iraq. His group gave daily reports to Margaret Thatcher and John Major in murder of Samarkand. Uh, whatever. He describes how this experience led him to disbelieve the claims of the UK and US governments in 2002 about the Iraqi WMDs. So his disenchantment with the UK's foreign policies seemed to have grown over the years in, instead of suddenly to have appeared only during the, the two years in which he was ambassador. On 18th of May, he, he headlined at much-followed blog Philip Cross Affair, and reported 133,612 edits to Wikipedia have been made in the name of Philip Cross over 14 years. That's over 30 edits a day, seven days a week. Since I do not use that, that figuratively, Wikipedia edits are timed. And if you plot them on a time card for Philip Cross's Wikipedia activity, it's astonishing it, if it is a single individual. Anyway, I can't go through this whole thing because we don't have time, but let me just jump down here to the bottom of the article. And he says, as I mentioned in those articles, even Britain and BBC's previously headlined Wikipedia shows CIA page edits. <laughs> yes. If you read Wikipedia and you're looking for some honest information, you're not getting it. That, 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 that's why you should never use Wikipedia. Um, that's why nobody should ever use Wikipedia. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, they're, they're just giving you prop, government propaganda, uh, and, that, and that's all you're going to get from them uh, on those things. So just, just bear that in mind. I'd like to go on, but I'm out of time. I've got I to do our last set here. Um, yes. So this is brand new from Power Wolf. Uh, I've played, okay. I've played, played several Power Wolf songs on the show before. Whether you recall them or not, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but this is brand new off of their new upcoming uh, oh. album called The Sacrament of Sin. This particular track is called Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend. Yeah, 
Christopher Amoroso there, uh, covering Black Betty in a very nice way. I, lo I love that version. It's awesome. Uh, before that, we had uh, the Peanuts gang doing La Grange by ZZ Top. It's actually a ZZ Top song, but uh, it's Peanuts uh, animations over that. Uh, there's a guy over there on YouTube named Garen Lazar does those. He does a bunch of them. I, did, I played 2112, the all 21 minutes of it last week. Uh, before that, we had Ina Forceman with 16 tons. And we kicked it off with Power Wolf's new one, Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend. So, that'll wrap it up for us here tonight. Had yes, good, indeed. Had a good time. Yeah, I did, too. And uh, we'll be back next Friday with another... I will not be back next Friday. What, 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 what? I'm sorry to say... My kid's graduation party is next Saturday, and it's at my brother's house in the cities, so I will not be here next Friday. All right. Well, I'll be back next Friday. <laughs> uh, okay, good. I mean, I'm sorry to say, but it's just that time of year, and this is like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I mean, I would hope so. This isn't a normal thing. <laughs> no. So I have to be... All right. I'm, I'm going to be busy all weekend next weekend. All right. All right. Party so you, got, deal. You, got, you got two weeks of balls to the wall heading your way. Right. Uh, so you know what? You guys are lucky. I mean, you know, it, like Grammy, she's got a life to live too with her grandbabies and all, everything, you know. So life kind of supersedes the volunteer radio gig. There you sometimes, go. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know. All right. Nope, 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 nope. That's no, uh, life. No so, situation. That's uh, fine. Uh, all right. Um, so uh, sorry, I'm gonna blindside you, but that's uh, all right. Yeah, you see, you're gonna have two balls of the wall shows back to back right, you coming know. up, uh, and you're gonna have more yeah. over the summer too. So what was that? I said there'll be more of them over the summer too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, there yeah. will be because you know I have a life to live. I'm going to festivals and yeah, a lot going on right now. She's so a, she's a um, happening gal. You know, she needs to get out there and shake that thing. So, you know uh, that. I mean, it's summertime, so. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, this is how I survive the freaking Wisconsin winter. It, it's staying shaking time. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And, you know, if I didn't do this, I would be, I don't know what I would be. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be me, so. All right. Anyway, you yeah. got the dark table tomorrow at noon with Grammy and Flash. Yes. I'll yes. be on. I'll be on Sunday morning here with the blues, and we're playing the trivia here in the chat. And uh, then you got Hal Anthony Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, behind the woodshed, and Gary L and Gigi's boot on the road less traveled once yes, again. Yes, indeed. Sunday night at seven, and that that's it. Right. Anything else? That's it. Um, no, I'm good. All right, peace. Have a kick-ass weekend. Yep. Oh, sorry, Grim. I answered. Do it again. Do the thing. I just said peace. All right. Peace.